turn the background it's more interesting hello everybody this is Sarah Collado of Architecture Talk Tang today I'm meeting with an old friend of mine Richard Petrie who hasn't been a guest to, uh, on this podcast yet but always the first um welcome Richard thank you so much for accepting my invitation to join me today you're welcome I always accept your invitation to join you Sarah <laughs> Uh, wonderful. Yeah, I know it's true. Um, so I wanted to actually, I'm really excited about this conversation because you uh, run the Marketing Institute, Architects Marketing Institute, and there is just so much incredible content in the blog about marketing and how, you know, how architects can raise their value and also um, about how to price yourself better and how to earn better. and you know, all of this is what I wanted to talk to you about. Um, yep. But in the first place, um, I wanted to sort of break down what value is in the in the first place, because I have a feeling like architects generally struggle with their value, with defining whether or not they're an expert, what makes you an expert, when is the good time to call yourself an expert. And I think also that reflects to the way that they price their services or, or better yet, communicate what they're good at and what they can do for their clients and so altogether it turns out to be a bit of a mess and it we might be able to blame the fact that um, you know for many years it was prohibited for us to do marketing so maybe we got into a bad practice about it um, or maybe it's generational but one way or another, I think it's very important to break down what value is in the first place and you know let's talk a little bit about that. Um, since you've got so much experience working with architects and helping them raise their mm. value as well as raise uh, their profits. Yeah, well, this is going to be really good because I think you've hit on a topic which is so under taught and so under understood and so underused because of those reasons that if you think about it, the income that any of us earn, doesn't matter what industry you're in, really is in direct proportion to the value that you can deliver someone so for example and let's let's keep it really simple if i'm sitting in wanaka in new zealand at the moment and if i want to get to the airport and i don't have a car i have the option of uh, giving a bus company 35 dollars to deliver me a certain value to get me to the airport now, I've never used this example before, so I'm thinking about it as I go. Um, I would rather have the the transportation from the from here to the airport than I would than I, I would have than I would have my thirty five dollars. So I'm getting mm -hmm. more. I would pay more than that, but that's what it costs. So I'm happy to give them thirty five. Now to them, and this is the differential. To them, they would rather have the thirty five dollars than not allow me to get on that bus and get to the airport, right? Mm -hmm. And so we both win, right? I'm giving them $35 and I'm getting more value than that. And they're giving me a ride, but it costs them less than 35 to get me there, right? Mm -hmm. So what we're looking for here is when we're, when we're trying to create value for people, and particularly if you're the one asking for money, You've then got to think, what can I deliver that other person that's worth more than the money I'm asking for? Mm -hmm. And I reckon a rough rule of thumb, well, it's a good way to start anyway, would be, you know, if you want to charge, let's say you, you're an architect and you've been, on average, you charge, I don't know, 30 or $40,000 or euros or or pesos or whatever you charge, and, and you go, I want to charge 100000 then you're going to have to up your value, right? You're okay. going to have to, you, you're going to have to find either. And it's interesting because value is very subjective. Like if I offered you my services for a hundred thousand dollars, you might go, eh, I don't know if that's worth it for me, but for someone else, I could teach them or do the same thing for them. And they would make a million because of what I taught them. And mm -hmm. to them, it's a great deal. Right? So, Sorry. Value is subjective. Um, it changes depending on the context. Um, it can change depending on time. And, and it, it's really a, a case of finding what can I give my ideal client 
that's worth far more to them than their money mm -hmm. in the architectural context. Now, the problem is with an architect is if you ask most architects what they do, you know, what I, what are you? And they, they go, I'm an architect. And you go, okay, why should I choose you over all other architects? And they go, oh, and you can see them start to, their eyes go up and they're going, oh, no, not this question. Uh, because I do great design. You know, we do great design. Yeah. Okay. But, but doesn't everybody, I mean, you know, you go for about a million years to get your architectural degree. So if you get through to be, call yourself an architect, you, you have to be pretty good. So everybody's pretty good. And in fact, someone like me, who's not an architect, I, I can't really tell the difference between someone who's good and someone who's great anyway, unless mm -hmm. I hear other people talking about them and if, you know, but if you said, you know, here, here's this great act, even Frank Lloyd Wright, here's his house and here's, here's Joe Smith. Here's, here's his, her house. I wouldn't really know that Frank Lloyd Wright house was better, you know? Mm -hmm. So to me, I might go, well, there's more value in Joe Smith because I, I just happen to like her stuff better. Yeah. Right? Or find so, it more practical for whatever reason, maybe yeah. because of family being a priority or something different. Yeah, I just like the windows, you know, something pathetic like, you know, I like the color. Mm -hmm. um, so, so, okay, so value. So then we've got to dig into, okay, well then how can, what is value, right? Mm -hmm. What is value? And we talked about, well, if, it's, if you're exchanging money, then it's something that's worth more than money to that person. Well, then you've got to ask yourself, what is that something? Mm -hmm. You go, oh, well, it's architecture and design. No, yeah, no, that's too broad. That's too broad. I can get architecture and design from anybody in the phone book who's got the word architecture beside them, right? So it needs to be more specific than that. And so then you've got to go, okay, if I'm trying to find more value than the money they're going to give for me, then, then I need to start asking myself, what context do I want to design in? You know, what situations, what type of projects do I want to do? And maybe what type of clients do I want, right? Because when I drill down to the type of clients I want to work with, then I can start asking myself better questions, right? Mm -hmm. Then I can start saying, all right, who do I want to deal with? And what type of projects do I want them to be doing, right? So, okay, okay I want to do, I want to do these, you know, let's say property developers. Okay, great. Now I've got to say to myself, what is it that property developers value most? Mm -hmm. What do they value most? Because if I just go, what do clients value most? It's like, it's like jumping into the ocean. It, it could be anything. But when I narrow it down, let's say, to property developers who are doing a development in Wanaka, say, now I can say, well, what do they value? And now I can go and find out. I might be able to ask them and say, well, what do you value? Now, one of the better ways to find out what they value is obviously ask them um, as a group and or individually, because that's, I mean, I don't know what they value, but they, they know what they value, but a place to help them identify for me what it is they value is if you think in terms of, you know, you're trying to win a project, there's different stages that someone will go through. They'll go through the early stage where they're kind of just thinking about a, you know, maybe they're looking at a piece of land so that's one stage. And then there might be another stage where they bought a piece of land and now they're thinking how do, you know, if it's a property developer, how do I optimize the, the value of this piece of land? What, what development can I do on this land? Um, and then they're getting options. And then they, then they go through to the stage, I think, of picking all, of all the options, which is the best option. And then it goes through to, okay, well, if that's the best option, maybe who's the best architect, who's the best builder, who's the best, right? So that particular person is going to come with their own set of their own roadmap and their own problems and their own questions and their own risks. Right. Mm -hmm. And because we've gone, let's say to property developers in Wanaka, we can, we can break that down now and, and we can kind of find out specifically for that type of person and project. We can, we can ask those questions and get relevant answers. Right. Whereas if I just say, oh, what do clients want in general? It's like too broad. Okay. So now we know there's different stages they go through and there's different problems they're going to have at each different stage. One of the best 
um, points to find value is in fixing people's problems, right? Yeah, so, absolutely. Right. So we, we can focus on the problems at the different stages. And in particular, if I'm an architect trying to win projects, it doesn't pay for me to solve the problem sort of in the middle and at the end of their journey. The best thing I can do is be the world's leading authority on solving their problems and answering their questions in the first few phases when they're in the thinking about it mode. You know, okay. so when they're in the, you know, looking for land or they have land and looking for the best options or choosing the best option, it's kind of in those phases. And so they're going to have problems. And it's interesting, isn't it? Just going, jumping to the side a wee bit, but um, psychology of motivation is like the psychology of people either move towards something or they move away from something. So they're either trying to achieve an outcome or they're trying to move away from something which is painful. So they're either trying to move towards a gain or move away from a pain. And generally speaking, most people will do more to move away from pain than they will to move towards pleasure. Mm -hmm. We'd all like to say, I'm I'm a goal setter and I like to go for these big goals and you know, I want to, I want to you know, make a million dollars as an architect or I want to do this or that. but And that's good, but it, it doesn't usually last that long. But if you're in extreme pain and you're, you're at risk of going out of business because you haven't won a project, you'll do far more in that situation. Your motivation is far higher and sustainable to move you away from pain. So pain is a really good place to focus when it comes to value. Motivation. Yeah, exactly. So helping people. So then you go, okay, well, what are the pain points of these people? And, you know, I don't know the answer, but, you know, if you're going to target developers in Monica, then you need to know the answer. What are the pain points? And not only that is, let's say they're struggling to get, a, you know, a permit for something. Um, that's good. That's a good one. So, okay, what's it costing them not to get a permit? Right? It might, you know, it's costing them, maybe there's holding costs, um, there's all sorts of costs, right? It's expensive. They're missing out on this profit they were hoping to make. And so if you know the cost of it, then you know that your value of going in and helping them get a permit like is now exponentially greater than someone else down the road who's trying to get a permit, right? They're hemorrhaging mm-hmm. money because it's costing them a whole cost. So anyway, so the value to them. So now I know the phases they go through. I know some of the problems they face at each of those phases then I can start solving those problems. And and by solving those problems, I can either connect with them or I can um, provide them consulting services or or little mini services um, prior to even being hired as the architect. So that's a different strategy. But that's how I look at value is 